Yeah, so I was reading around yesterday, and uh, did you hear that Proton VPN's a botnet? What? Yep, it's actually confirmed if you kept up with news and, you know, you actually spent more time on the channel. I, I would just think that someone who's an affiliate for Proton might know that. But Proton doesn't have a... Oh, did you hear that IPVanish actually kept logs on the user? Now, that's a big deal. How come your review didn't mention that? Well, the review was made before... Did you know? Did, 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 did you know that NordVPN and that Tessanet are actually the same company and they are a data mining operation? Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually heard that Ola and Nord are the same company, too. I VPN. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Tech Lore. I want to open up this video with an apology for the huge delay. Lots of the things that will be discussed have been taking place over the last several months, and I started with one video, just one, about a service about five months ago, and as I was editing it, more stuff came out about another service, so I started putting the videos together as one video, which I had to scrap because there was even more updates made. Long story short, it's been a long journey to put this together. Yeah. Today, we are going to go through lots of concerns that have been going on with VPN companies. Some are accusations, some are 100% valid concerns, and some are just basic security problems, and some are just you guys making stuff up in YouTube comments. Even during Go Incognito season, VPNs are still a big part of protecting your web traffic, so hearing some questionable behavior from them is concerning, and it's important to bring that up. Today, we will be covering IPVanish, PIA, CyberGhost, ProtonVPN, and NordVPN. It's going to be a longer video, so I will leave timestamps in the description for each specific service. Let's start with IPVanish. In 2016, a company called Highwinds owned IPVanish, selling themselves as a non-logging service. A user who was using a Comcast IP address was connecting to IPVanish to distribute child pornography. Everything was working well for him until Homeland Security started an investigation to track who this criminal was. Well, their search took them to servers belonging to IPVanish, Homeland Security sent Highwinds a request for their information, and Highwinds actually denied it, saying they aren't willing to sacrifice their users' privacy. Homeland Security then sent a second request, this time much more thorough, and Highwinds cracked, sending over all the details required to have the user arrested. Highwinds didn't just send timestamps that Homeland Security could use to correlate connection times to a specific person. They actually sent over the suspect's name, his email address, his subscription details, his home IP address, as well as all dates and times that he connected to and from the IRC network he was using to distribute the illegal content. Okay, so what's happened since then? Well, in 2017, StackPath bought out IPVanish, getting rid of Highwinds. So now that this case is public, we have to look at the current company running IPVanish. Here's what the CEO said. With no exception, does IPVanish not, has not, and will not log or store logs of our users as a StackPath company. Most important, StackPath will defend the privacy of our users regardless of who demands otherwise. I can't speak to what happened on someone else's watch, but technology is my life. I've spent my career helping customers build on and use the internet on their terms. StackPath takes that even further. Security and privacy is our core mission. I also happen to be a lawyer, and I will spend my last breath protecting individuals' rights to privacy, especially our customers. So they're saying that they didn't control the company when it happened. So therefore, they're unable to speak for what's happening now, and the only assurance they give their customers is Security and privacy is our core mission. I don't know. They've done nothing, like, seriously, nothing to address these concerns. They haven't changed their privacy policy. They haven't done anything to assure us they've changed. We had to take their word from their very reassuring CEO that all of these problems were caused by previous management, which doesn't exist anymore. Therefore, the problems go away. Now, since I was an affiliate, I thought I might be able to get some more information. I reached out to an IPVanish employee to ask for a comment on the matter. That's it. And I got a copied and pasted response from all their other posts on the topic. So, yeah, no special treatment there. I, I think that sums up the majority of the problems. Let's go through why this happened, what you can do to avoid it in the future, and whether or not IPVanish can be trusted. There's a lot of things that went into it, and it wasn't because their link didn't work. The problem is that IPVanish sent over logs of when this user connected to the IRC network, which means they had to actively log every website he visited and how long he was on each website. To avoid this, for you, you people out there watching this video, if you want to avoid this, first, make sure you pick a service you personally trust. And, you know, if it was IPVanish, that's fine. Trust your gut instinct. And always assume 
they're going to log. I know that's very counterintuitive, but always assume that you, they will fail you in the long run. So you need to implement proper OPSEC, like enabling HTTPS everywhere so that the VPN can't scan the contents of your traffic, and to not rely on a VPN to make you private and secure. It is a simple tool, that is all it is. Remember, they are not an all-in-one anonymization tool. In fact, they're more of a security tool than a privacy one, in my opinion. On top of that, do not register your real information if you want privacy. This is just a no-brainer. Like, come on, guys. Now, the second major thing <coughs> well, that is what I'd argue is the biggest cause of this happening to be is jurisdiction. If you haven't already, I would 100% recommend watching my video talking about the 14 eyes because it breaks this down very well and in depth. IPVanish has US jurisdiction, meaning they are forced to comply with any orders or requests of data from the United States unless they want to be taken to court and put out of business. In general, just pick services you trust and be smart about what you're choosing. As for what I can do, I am spreading all the information I know and can deliver to you, the viewers, in videos like this. I mean, the instant I found out about the IPVanish stuff, there was mass updates sent. I hope you read them. Um, Outside of that, I removed them from my website very shortly after this news came out. I deleted my affiliate account recently, and IPVanish is no longer recommended on the channel, hopefully for obvious reasons. So you will see that in their next update on their review, which will one day happen. I don't know, I'm so behind on all the reviews. I do want to mention that the person who discovered the case exposing the IPVanish logs was a normal user who just happened to be going through cases on the internet, and they posted the revelations on Reddit. They also reached out to me personally to make sure I caught wind of the case. Let that be a reminder to share any possible revelations publicly, and if you do need a platform or think you have information with evidence, you can always reach out to me about it, and I'm happy to publicize it for you. Let's move on to Private Internet Access, the worst name of any VPN company. PIA, we'll go with PIA. If anyone follows me on Reddit, they may have seen my post showing the PIA client for Windows and some other clients can expose a user's username and password on their computer for the VPN, not the computer itself. This was something brought to my attention by another user, so I made sure to publicize it. Essentially, the problem is PIA temporarily stores the user's username and password in a file that is completely unencrypted during the VPN connection process. The user who figured this out simply stopped the process during the VPN connection and was able to gain access to a user's credentials because it was left in an unencrypted file containing the login credentials. The reason this isn't a huge concern is because the only way to truly exploit this vulnerability is if someone already has full access to your computer, and in this situation, I'd hope your VPN login credentials for your $4.99 a month service aren't necessarily your largest concern. But that doesn't mean programs and developers shouldn't implement basic security standards, and this is why it is important to publicize these types of problems. If every piece of software got lazy with security because it wasn't viewed as important, we would be living in a world less secure than Michael Linton's emails. That's, that's really it. There's not much to say about PIA. CyberGhost was accused of not having their advertised Romanian jurisdiction because they have German employees, leading to thoughts that CyberGhost is based out of Germany, a U14 eyes country. If you want to learn more about the 14 eyes, again, I made a video about that. I'm not going to go too in depth about the CyberGhost claim because outside of this Reddit post with zero sources, there is nothing to actually back this up. And their own website shows they're registered as a company in Romania. All right, this is, I guess, probably the highlight. Let's cover ProtonVPN and NordVPN together since they were originally in the same boat and then, you know, they kind of drifted apart. It was like Boromir and Faramir almost, you know. In a forum post about five months ago, at the time of scripting this, so maybe a little more. On Hacker News, detailing what happened with IPVanish, a user who is the co-founder of PIA made a response making some pretty damn big claims. First, he claimed that a ProtonVPN is not the same company as ProtonMail, then he claims ProtonVPN is run by a company called Tessonet, then that Tessonet is a data mining operation, so therefore ProtonVPN is a data mining operation. He then says NordVPN is also operated by Tessonet, and the final claim, which is just pretty much a summary of all that, is that ProtonVPN and NordVPN are both a joint venture set up by ProtonMail and Tessonet as like a giant data mining operation. That's the claim. I just want to start this off by saying these are huge claims, so let's break them all down individually because there's a lot to it and it's a lot deeper than what it sounds like to see what's true and not true. This is absolutely true, and you can actually find this information on their website. 
ProtonVPN is headquartered in Switzerland and is a separate entity from Proton Technologies, who operates Proton Mail. This is claimed to be done for security reasons, which to me makes a lot of sense. Spider Oak is a company similar to Proton when it comes to offering privacy and security services. The problem is Spider Oak put all of their services, like their password manager and cloud service, under the same entity. Well, their warrant cannery was recently changed on their website, leading to the possible belief that they have been compromised by a government. And sadly, that means none of their services are really trusted anymore. Proton has two separate entities, so if one is compromised, it may offer an extra degree of protection to them as a company and to you as a consumer even if it is small. Proton commented on this specifically by stating it was done to avoid ProtonMail getting banned in jurisdictions where VPNs are illegal. But on the flip side, you could interpret this as a way for Proton to lower their risk. If hypothetically their VPN service is a data mining operation and they were caught, their mail service would be protected. I personally lean towards the first scenario, not only because it makes more sense, but also because Proton has a great reputation and an I doubt they'd put all of that reputation at risk with something that'd be this obvious to figure out. So this claim is true, but somewhat misleading since it could be favorable actually for the service. Now this goes like Tokyo Drift 0 to 100. Let's break down the evidence for this and see if it's valid. The first is that ProtonVPN and Tessonet shared an office. Now this is partially true. At first glance, the address looks similar, but when you actually look at the addresses, it ends up being here and the Tessonet address is over here. So not the same office, but not even the same building, but about one or two blocks away from each other. And this is based on the PIA rep's evidence. On one side of the coin, this could mean nothing since these are just rented offices. And if you look at the other companies that share the same building with Tessanet, you'll find a couple nightclubs and a fast food joint. On top of that, this isn't the headquarters of Proton VPN, it's just one of their offices. On the other side of the coin though, it is a huge coincidence, obviously, for them to be so close to each other, so maybe there's a connection. Luckily, there's a lot more to the story that breaks this down. The PIA rep adds to this argument by linking the Proton VPN Android APK, which is signed by Tessonet. And this is where things start getting really juicy. So Proton responded to this claim by stating they outsourced HR to a third party because they only had one employee in this new office and they wanted to give him proper benefits. So they recruited Tessonet. Since he was employed through Tessonet, he put them as the company behind the APK certification and now they are unable to change the certification since it is impossible to change an APK certification without republishing the app entirely. As for whether or not it was an accident, that's up in the air and I think the rest of the evidence can help you as an individual answer that question. So, is Proton owned by Tessonet? There is zero evidence of this directly being true. The only evidence of anything is that there was HR work done by Tessonet for a Proton employee. They admit this, which Tessonet advertises the service on their website. There is no evidence from the PIA co-founder or from Proton themselves leading us to think anything more is going on than this. Proton VPN is a registered company as well as Tessonet in two different countries, so I struggle to see this claim being true, although there were some things posted online with signatures, but I do question the validity of these documents. Now, personally, this is like my favorite. I found this one pretty interesting because this is the only one that people have come to just accept as fact without really researching it. There is absolutely no mention of anything related to the buying and selling of data on Tessanet's website, or even basic research of any instance of it ever happening. Tessanet offers infrastructure to companies, sometimes through the means of servers, HR, skill set, tech support, website hosting, and more. They are not at least strictly a data mining operation, at least on the surface, as far as we know. It's not their business model. This doesn't mean they're not doing it. I don't want to make that claim because I have no idea. I just think it's important for people to realize what services Tessanet actually offers because people seem to think it's strictly a data mining operation when we really don't know. There's no evidence of that being true. As a whole, this is like the whole claim made by the PIA rep. ProtonVPN is a data mining operation. The evidence to back this up is Proton is not the same company as ProtonMail, even though they almost advertise it to be that way. ProtonVPN has a relationship with a company called Tessonet. 
Tessanet could possibly be a data mining operation, and Tessanet may own Proton VPN, or at least have a very strong relationship with them. We covered all these claims, and here's a short summary. Okay, this is what I think is like the easiest way to give it to you. On one hand, you have a company that advertises itself to be the same company as an other, more reputable one, Proton Mail, when it's not. One of their offices happens to be right next to a company that works with businesses and perhaps data related to those businesses. That same company is seen on Proton VPN's APK, and this could raise a lot of suspicion of possibly being a data mining operation. On the completely other hand, ProtonVPN is a separate entity from ProtonMail for security reasons. Their office happens to be located next to Tessonet, and they needed HR support from them to give their employee benefits. They made a mistake with certifying their Android APK, and none of their servers or user data have ever gone through Tessonet. Those, those are the two sides of the coin. I can't give you the truth, but I hope that gives both sides of the story. We're not done. So the post from the PIA rep throws Nord into the mix, saying they're also operated by Tessonet. Therefore, both NordVPN and Tessonet are operated under the same company. I want to mention, his source saying Nord is owned by Tessonet has nothing related to Tessonet on the webpage. I looked through everything. I can't tell you how much I looked through this. The only thing is Tefencom, which is a parent company of Nord. This is on Nord's website. Um, it's not the same as Tessonet. I I think this is where the confusion came up. I looked through everything and I couldn't find anything related to Tessanet on this webpage. The other link is used to prove that Nord claims they're based in Panama, not Lithuania. Which is a very misleading way to word that, since of course Nord will claim they're based out of Panama. And of course his source is accurate. They claim they're based out of Panama. That's their jurisdiction. You don't need a source for that. You just go to the website. The thing is there's no evidence anywhere saying Nord is based out of Lithuania. That's just something that was kind of made up as if it was true. There's no evidence. He doesn't even include evidence in his own original source. I can't advance the argument for the PIA rep here. The, those are the only claims he makes, and both of them have no evidence. But, but, not so fast. Nord reached out to me after making that last video, and even though there was no evidence of anything tying him to Tessanet, and even though I didn't really say anything, I was told that Tessanet had been a partner of theirs, and they provided Nord with help related to payment processing and BGP networking in the past, and as of today, they help Nord with only marketing activities. Nord is very big into marketing. I mean, tons of my friends see Nord advertisements on TV, and also I feel like every YouTuber sponsored by Nord nowadays. Nord reassured that Tessanet has no way of getting user data because there's no data for them to collect outside emails and payment information, and because they don't work anything related to user data only marketing for the company. Nord actually made an entire blog post with evidence backing up this rumor that this is all a planned attack from their competitors, which is actually almost an a a attack from them. And all these allegations were recently reintroduced with the accusations that Ola VPN and NordVPN had a business relationship. First, this is a lawsuit, not a finished case. It's just an accusation. Second, the lawsuit is not suing Nord. It's suing Tessonet, which people assume own Nord because of previous rumors. So there was actually nothing directly tying Ola and Nord, it was just because Tessonet was thrown into the mix. Nord goes as far to claim these attacks are planned from an other VPN company setting up bots on Twitter and Reddit to help spread the false rumors. If I may add, I did receive an influx of comments coming from one source on one day. It's just an observation on my channel. On that same blog, they discuss an upcoming audit, and it has been completed, revealing that they, in fact, do not keep logs on users. I did read through it and the only data outside of obvious payments and email they store is the concurrent number of active devices on an account, and this information is only stored for 15 minutes. That's what the audit says. Restore Privacy, a super honest blog site, you should definitely check them out, that spreads great information, seem to also find there's not a single verifiable source for this entire Nord situation. As previously stated, I encourage you to pick a side on your own because I don't have necessarily all the answers. But, from a content creator perspective, who needs to stay impartial, especially since I review these services on the channel and people will throw a hissy fit if I'm not impartial, I can confidently tell you there's absolutely no hard evidence of Nord or Proton doing anything wrong. Hard evidence. But it is still important to bring it up and stay updated on any future news to make sure things are still safe. 
Some things to keep an eye on are any future advancements with ProtonMail and ProtonVPN, especially with their warrant cannery, and also any upcoming updates because I can almost guarantee there will be some. And that wraps up this really long video. I hope it has at least shed light on the rumors, the positive and negative things that came out of them, and made you more informed in general with some of the VPN drama going on, and hopefully teaching you just not to just mindlessly listen to YouTube comments. To make sure you stay updated to receive the best news and coverage of VPNs, and more so in the privacy and security tutorials, make sure to subscribe to the channel and be a part of our community on our platforms, including Patreon, where you receive awesome benefits. Lastly, make sure to check out Go Incognito, a full course from start to finish, teaching you everything you need to know about how to become private, secure, and anonymous in our modern day world. Available free to watch on YouTube. I promise you, you'll love it. It's very well put together. That is all. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give a like and subscribe and have a lemurish day. <laughs>